Welcome to Big Oz Explorers. We've been touring in a caravan for over a year now and have learned a lot about how to manage in a tiny home while traveling around Australia. I'm Sean, and this is Chris, and our kids, Jada and Jack. Follow our family and live van life through our eyes while we take you on the trip of a lifetime around Australia's hotspots. Click the subscribe button to join our adventure every Thursday and stay up to date with everything Big Oz. On today's episode, we're going to the Karunji track. You can enter from Wyndham by driving over the Salt Flats and past the King River or via the Gibb River Road through the Free Camp just before you cross the Pentecost River. We have actually completed this track twice. The first time we rushed home for Jack, as you'll soon see, and the second was with travelling campers, so you may spot their car in some of our drone footage today. In this episode, we enter from the Wyndham direction and our journey will take off from the Moochalabra Dam, the main water source for the Wyndham town. The other day, he had a sore in his eye just here, which is now slowly healing. Hey, was it sore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he fell over some stairs catching bubbles and he hurt his lip. And then he had a tantrum the other day and he cut the back of his head. So he's had three in one week, he's in the wars. And then today or last night, there was temperatures. Jada on the other hand over here is perfectly fine. <laughs> but he's happy, he's finally eating something, some watermelon, it's a good start. He's been like not keen on food for about two days. He's just watching a movie. And we're about to move on. To the next stop, which I think is cave paintings. So about a hundred meters down the road from where that Moochalabra, Moochalabra? Dam was. That'll do, yeah. Yeah, that'll do. There's um, apparently Aboriginal cave paintings. So we're just gonna go and have a really quick look at them. We've left the kids in the car. They're still going with their watermelon. And um, just have a look. How much easier is it without carrying a kid? <laughs> the rock art in this area is unique and irreplaceable. Please help us preserve it for the future. In other words, don't touch it. Don't be that guy. What's in there? That looks a bit freaky, doesn't it? It just stops, but it keeps going in a sense. It's, it's like, like perfectly are... round. I feel like people have gone there. Look, it looks like it's been dug a bit. Yeah. It looks like it goes a fair way in though. From, I don't know. Oh, I'm not keen. <laughs> a little bit daunting. Where, oh yeah, there's a couple here. Oh yeah. They'll probably be all the way along here then. Where are you looking? Oh yeah. Actually, that's one of those Woodrell things, isn't it? I don't know. I bet the kind of looks fresh, doesn't it? Maybe it's a pretend one. Yeah. That's the thing, eh? Sometimes you just don't know. You really don't know. Especially when it's so far out. But I can totally understand this being a place that would have been a really good home back in the day. Oh, yeah. What a good rock ledge. Well, you're up high, you're away yeah. from all the elements down there. You can see anything that would be coming at you. Yeah. Oh, like a snake skin or something just there. What is that? Snake skin. Oh yeah, That's it is too. It. <laughs> That'd be cool be, to find a snake in here. I reckon they'd be in here for sure. Give, Put all the different holes. Oh, that's a good little house. So the cool thing about this, when you look up on the, here's Chris's head just down in the right in the corner, <laughs> but when you look up on the rocks, 
all those bits of black is where water would run. Yeah. So it's a type of microorganism, I believe, that creates that black area. And um, it's grown, obviously, because it's wet for the whole of the wet season. But it also helps protect the rock, so the rock doesn't wear away. But that's pretty much where all the waterfalls would have been, too. But, like, you look along this whole ridge, and, like, there's a good, probably 70% of it's black. Like, There'd be a just, lot of water. But then look at the stuff we're standing on, too. So it runs right over the top and then down onto here. I was just saying, like, how cool would that be in the wet as that's running? You could stand here and literally be right underneath the waterfall. Be really cool. You probably, but you probably be able can't to, get out here. I was gonna say, you probably wouldn't be able to get get out here, but yeah. the fact that that has so much water, like that's pretty black. It's really cool. Yeah. That's hey, awesome. look, the rock has all that ripply effect yeah, again. Yeah, so it must have been pieces. a seabed. Yeah. This is the one thing we've learnt. You got the ripples on the bottom. Like sand. Yeah. If you've ever seen at the beaches with the the sand underneath the water, it's got that you real ripple right effect. angle. You got to see that. That's like millions of years of just corrosion. Well, a layer of the seabed that's then covered with something else. Yeah. They have the same at Emma Gorge, which is actually isn't that far away from here. Yeah, well, that's true. It's still on the, well, it's only we're on our way side. to the Gibb River Road, and it's on the other side of this range. Yeah, the Coburn Range. Yeah. So we're on, on the Wyndham side, and then you've got the big range in the middle, and Gibb River and El Cresto and everything's on the other side there. So it's not that far. Oh, actually. look, you can see it in the rock. Hang on. How cool is that? What? So what we're talking about right now, look at this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's literally the layers. You can oh, see wow. all the beach layers. True. That's cool. Chris has just gone down to get the drone again so you can get perspective on just like how big this rock face is. And I was just walking back along, just looking at like some of this artwork and stuff. And far out, like, it's literally actually everywhere. It didn't look like much before, but now that I'm looking, it's all on the like roof level. So it's all along here. So you physically have to like look up. And then you start to see it all. So like that whole surface is pretty much painted into something. And then when you come around here, there's something else there in the background. There's something here at the front. It's all on the roof. There's another bit there. I don't know what that is, but that's very, very red. It's definitely been very colored in. And then when you look along this front edge, along here, there's all lines. And they go right the way up, they're like even up here. So this is our next stop, the Wyndham Prism Tree. Mom. Look how big it is. Jada's just looking in the hole at the front. I'll just come show you. Careful for snakes and things, Jada. Yeah, you can see right Look how big the hole is. You gonna get in? Um, Just uh, have a little bit of a look in there first. Make sure there's no snakes. You wanna have a look, babe? I can't quite see all the way down. Yeah, I don't think there is. Yeah, you can see It like goes right up oh, about probably halfway up. Oh really? Yeah, it's just a big cavity. What's Jada doing? <laughs> I know, she's in the big hole. She's in the tree. She's in the tree. <laughs> Can I have a look? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, there's a hole in the top. Yeah, there is. Then there's one up there and there. Wow, that's really cool, huh? <laughs> I must admit, I, like I reckon I reckon this one's better than the one at Derby. Yeah, I agree. Because at Derby, it's fenced off. Well, it's kind of fenced off. But I don't think it's the holes big enough that you can get into. But where this is like, there's no fencing. It's all open. There's like, you could fit about 10 people in there, I reckon. The only thing that's disappointing here, and you can see a fresh one there, look. Yeah. Is this. Oh, there's a lot of it. It's basically graffiti. But... Yeah. It's all over it. Yeah. And that's why these places get fenced off. So don't do that. Yeah. But otherwise, it's really cool. That's really, that's awesome. Do you want to, do you want to go in? Yeah, look, sit here. You want to sit in the window? Uh. Wow. Dad's turn. 
Can you fit? <laughs> oh, <excuse laughs> you. oh, just. <laughs> What's he doing, Jay Jack? Come here. Yeah, can you grab him? Sorry, I'm just trying to film you at the same time. <laughs> Whoa. There you go. Whoa. Hi. So we've just come in to dig his rest. I've just gone in to go and ask them about the Karunji track and if it's open. The street sign at the beginning of the road said closed and then the one at the gate says enter at your own risk. So I thought I'll go check. And um, it's the most stationy station I've ever been in. Well, it definitely looks like it when you drive in. They're, they're on lunch break at the moment. Yeah. So it's just everyone that works on the station, everyone's, good night, mate. You know, and they've all got their work <laughs> boots on and they're like, station looking clothes, I don't know. And then there's all like the station. Cowboy like cowboy farm people. Drovers and stuff. Hey you going? Like, they're like, what the hell is this chick doing here? So I just want to ask out the crunchy track and is it open? They're like, are you towing a van? I'm like, no, no, no van. He's like, oh, yeah, righto. Do you know how to four drive? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we love four driving. Like, it's really good. He goes, oh, you'd be right. It's 50Ks, about two hours, the end bit's rough though. Carefully in the marshes too, you might sink. I'm like, all right. Well, so time. yeah, basically, <laughs> he said to us, we can make it. Yeah. Um, just take it easy in the marshes and the end is rough. He goes, oh yeah, you'd be right then. Don't worry, it's all good. Nah, it's not closed. Just make sure you shut those gates behind you. Hey, we have problems with cattle and tourists. So. <laughs> that's, that's what he sounds like. You're I'm just serious. Like, went into like cowboy mode. Because <laughs> that's what was going on. Anyway, let's go do the crunchy check. We'll show you the entrance before we go in. So yeah, I've, you've noticed I've just dropped the tire pressures there. So I've put them down to about 30 because I can always drop them if we uh, if it gets a bit hectic a bit further in. Not knowing what we're in for, um, it's good just to keep that a little bit higher because it does make it a bit easier on the smoother bits. But if it does get quite rough, I'll drop it a little bit further. But uh, about 30 psi at the moment with the bigger tires runs really well. So yeah, pretty excited about this. We've heard a lot about it. We didn't get to do it in the wet season last time, obviously because it was too wet. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Let's do it. Looks like we got our first problem gate. What's wrong? Show me. Oh, it's like a puzzle, isn't it? Mm. Oh, there we go. Did you see what I did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta like put it up? Yeah. Up and like that. And then pull it out. Yeah, Pretty cool. Easy. So that's how you, it'll be easier to shut. Okay, you happy with that? Yeah. Okay. Go on this side. We're going to have problems. Just 
driving through this little section here and there's a big water hole with all the cows. We just got to the other side up here and there was two massive rollers. You don't see them very often, but when you do, in an opportunity like this, you've got to get the camera out because we haven't had a photo of one, like, yet. So we've just made it to the marsh fields. What do they call them? Marsh flats. So it's basically just like wetland. You can see the couple of tracks here where someone's tried to uh, take a different track and it's that doesn't look very old and looks very soft. But like the tracks out here, you could get lost quite easily if you didn't have hammer on or any sort of mapping. Because these, just recently these tracks are starting to get a little bit more vague. <laughs> but uh, we thought we'd pull up here for a bit of lunch, get the kids outside. We're having a bit of a, a cheat day today. Got a couple of cokes and a few things from the Old River Roadhouse in town. They do some good gear. Got some uh, sushi rolls, rice paper rolls. Sandwich is really good. We got some watermelon there for Jack, mm. which he's uh, has been eating slightly. He's hanging out for one of these, and I'm waiting for you to finish. Yeah. He's like, I want to eat. <laughs> hook in, hook in. But uh, another big reason why we pull up here was this backdrop. So that's the Coburn Range. It is just stunning. So that's basically Jada all day, every day. Just roaming around for hours. <laughs> We're in the middle of absolutely nowhere and she's still out exploring. It's the joys of being on the road and the things you can go and check out. It's cool. So we're all finished lunch, all packed up, put our rubbish in our garbage bags. Always leave the place the way you found it. We're big on rubbish. Jack's actually uh, seems to be pretty content right now, aren't you? He's singing. What are you doing? Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. Oh. Oh. Yeah, really wow. Really exciting stuff. Oh, it's riveting. Now the next exciting bit is going to be getting across here. But yeah, you can see this track here. Someone's had a crack at. Doesn't look all that old. But it just goes to show, like the track, the main track's just here on the left. He's only going a car length over and it started to bloody sink in. I reckon the heart rate would have jumped up a fair bit as that started to go in. But yeah, you just gotta be wary because we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Like it is just flat for miles. You can only imagine what this is like in the wet. It'd be crazy to have a look at. going to show you a good example how you could probably get lost out here so you, it pays to have a hammer or Google Maps or something so you know where to go you got to start an endpoint because you got tracks like this that are so vague that don't even almost look like a track according to HEMA we're on point it pays to have some sort of mapping system because it will get you out of tricky spot sometimes and it has done so for us for some time so i kind of feel like we're from all for adventure right now or full drive action or someone who has more means to go completely off-road so what chris was just saying to you at the hema we um followed that track so i just ignore everything i just said i'm never following what i just said 
Yeah. This was the Hema track, we think. But then, if you can see vaguely, so vaguely into the distance there, there's some that go into these mud flats. And somewhere in this general vicinity is where that track's supposed to be. Obviously, every wet season it's going to get washed away. So, where do you go? So, the way around this, you get the drone out and just check for tracks. <laughs> excited about the damn track there's an actual two-wheel track in front of us and it's somewhat going in the same kind of the same direction <laughs> on here where it's telling us we're going a little diverted to where the track goes but we might be able to get back onto it we'll uh keep you posted at the end of the day they all have to go kind of the same direction surely we'll end up making our own tracks i don't care coming out the other end now and I guess that's the flats we would have driven through. But instead we've gone over this little range and down a little rock step, which is pretty cool. So it paid to put the drone up to find out that little track. Yeah. Because I feel like that might be a bit of a, a wet season track or something. Yeah, so work around. still get in and out of uh, checking the cattle and whatnot. Well, like if you look on here in comparison to the Hema track, so different. Oh my God, this is so hard to show you. I'm going to put a print screen in. <laughs> We're getting there though. Yes.
We need to mission it. We're running out of day. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed all this drone footage though. We've had a lot of time today. Yeah. But that's a part of going off all drive tracks and adventuring and all that sort of stuff because you've always got to allow yourself a bit of time because you just don't know what's going to happen. There's always a new adventure around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing we've learned over the years, but... So I'll only take two hours, six hours later. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was only joking this morning, but I reckon it'll be like nearly four hours. Yeah. Double. Not we, just because oh, we're... Oh, we hit the track at 11.15. And it's not just because we're YouTubers. It's, it's four actually, hours. It's actually because there was no track. <laughs> oh, the joys. This is what we love, though. We yeah. know that we do this stuff all the time, so... And we've got people at home in case you think we're crazy as well. Dad, obviously, we're staying at his place right now. If we didn't turn up, they'd know where we are. Oh, we've got a few so, connections in town, so yeah. worst case. Yeah. No, but they know where we are today, so yeah, we're not I mean, doing something right. stupidly in a sense. People know where we are, so we yeah. wouldn't be here for long. I feel like the question will probably come out um, that we've been asked quite a few times. Do you carry a satellite phone? No. If not, why not? Because I've had that quite a few times, and this would be a perfect example. Of, I feel like I might get asked. We well, haven't this whole time. This yeah. is probably well. We have done some remote it's stuff. It's just another but, thing to pay for, though. Especially if someone knows where you are. Well, if you saying, don't show up where you're supposed to go, someone knows where you are. Yeah. Well, what did we do before satellite phones? You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone would know where you were. Yeah. And in saying that, I guess we're kind of lucky because all you guys know that we're going to put an episode out on a Thursday. And if no one knew where we were and we don't do that for a couple of weeks, there's something very wrong. Just know that if we don't put it out and we don't tell you something is wrong and use your inspector gadget because that means that we're stuck somewhere. <laughs> we'll That's a really it. good thing to throw out to you right now. Leave it to the supporters to yeah. make sure that we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> Getting you crazy oh. content. Anyway, all right. All right, we got to go. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's see how bad this last bit is. Here's those watermarks again from however many millions of years ago. The beach that's no longer a beach. We were just looking at this here. Sorry about all my shadows. It's all been packed up so you can get through. So I thought I might record this. This could be interesting. Off you go, babe. Oh, that wasn't too bad. So at this stage, we're what? Probably a kilometre away now from the main road. And um, between then and now, so I think it was three o'clock at the time, it's now 10 past four. Jack's gone a little bit downhill and um, he's, he's a bit warm. Like, I don't know if it's temperature or not as such, but he's definitely not feeling his best look. He's definitely not Jack at the moment. Hey. Not feeling good. And he's very quiet, he's not crying. It's just not like him. And um, my stash of baby Panadol that I've usually got isn't where it normally is. So that's a catch for me too. And we're, what, a kilometer away from the main road. Of just an hour and 20 home, um, or 40 minutes out to El Questro. And I don't even, I can't really remember where the service comes up, but I'm actually a little bit worried about him because we've just been talking about how the other day he got his hands on, sorry, it's a really bumpy track. The other day he got his hands on um, some pistachio shells and he kind of like, he tried to eat one. Oh, it's a car. Oh, it's the first car we've seen all day. Um, he tried to eat one and it didn't really go as planned and he kind of like half choked on it and Chris like pulled it out of his mouth and stuff and we kind of didn't think any more of it but that happened and then between now and then um geez you see the track we're on is hectic oh my god well we're about to go on soft stuff so between now and then he hasn't really eaten much um today he hasn't drank a lot of fluids He's not interested in his bottles, which is really unlike him. He's not interested in snack foods, which is really unlike him. Like, he didn't get his big by doing nothing. And I'm just a little worried about him. So, I mean, we'll keep you in the loop, but that's kind of why we've obviously been on the track for another hour now, but we haven't really said much or done much because we're just on a mission mode to get out now because we want to be able to get Jack back. So, just watching him closely. Leave him, Jaden. All right. Well, um, oh my God, tune in when we're back.
back on the main road. Morning. Morning. So uh, a bit of an update on what Jack has been up to overnight. Mm. Um, as you've seen, he's been in the hospital. He's had a few tests and stuff. Um, at the end of the day, he's got swollen tonsils. Tonsillitis. Uh, ton yeah. I feel so sorry for him. He's been so much pain the last sort of 48, 36 hours, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, we've had to force all the Nurofen and Panadol into him. And the biggest issue is that he wasn't drinking. So he's basically dehydrated as well. So And he hasn't eaten bugger all over the last two days. So he's just exhausted. But... Yeah. He's just fallen asleep in the caravan. I'll put the footage in now. Yeah, he never and sleeps as early. No. And especially on the bed. Like, he just, he was it's laying there and he him. passed out. It's crazy. So, so, he's very tired. We've got to go back to the hospital this morning and just yeah. check out everything's okay. Um, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's all right. He's, you know, he smashed a bowl this morning. Um, yeah. He's all right. It should be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Hey. <gasps> High five. High five. Yeah, <laughs> well done. <laughs>